Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another live session with The Hype Magazine. I'm your editor-in-chief, Jerry Doby. And today, 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 we're going to have some fun. I've got the one and only, the soul sax man of all soul sax men, Mr. Boney James. We're here to talk about his upcoming albums, Slow Burn. He just dropped his amazing single all i want is you featuring october london october london I, we're going to ask you how you got to him but i'm listening i'm going man when he says baby or <laughs> uh stop what, what was it he had elongated notes on baby and stop that <laughs> gave me all marvin gay all day long am i wrong no that's his thing i mean his 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 first record i believe was called the rebirth of marvin and i think they had to get permission from the marvin estate to say that wow and, uh, and they were able to pull that off so yeah no definitely he sounds like he's got a very serious marvin influence and that was when i first heard him that was what drew me to him in the first place okay okay amazing joint man i'm Thank excited you. to hear slow bird and i'm in kansas city so i guess what guess where i'll see you yeah, Uptown in Theater. In November, <laughs> Uptown Theater. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I stole your thunder. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Look, man, I, I know we're just supposed to talk about the music, but I'm 61 years old. I've been listening to jazz from different artists. My mother, you know, this is your 19th album. And my mom had Boney James music when you were a kid. You know what I mean? And... Here I am, 61. I actually get to close the circle and talk to you. Mom, he's here. Anyway, um, so thank you so much. But I just want to, can we start with an introspective and from the inside looking out, will you tell us how you see Boney James, the, the artist, the creator? Is that too much? Oh, my gosh. Well, no, I, I just, I don't really think about that kind of stuff too much. You know, I'm just... Mm -hmm. I, I try and keep my head down and focus just on trying to play the saxophone as good as I can. And when I'm writing music, I want to really feel it myself. And and I, I don't think about much else. I'm very much focused on the the doing of it. Mm -hmm. And I get figure when it gets to the point where I'm really experiencing something, when I'm listening to it, that there's going to be some audience there that wants to hear it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the big picture stuff, I never think about it. Never think about it. You know, man... I was talking to one of the, the elders. Uh, he says, you know, you're getting too deep for me. And <laughs> I'm going, but I want to know these things because you guys are so brilliant. You have to be thinking, okay, fine, whatever. Benchmark moment that music said you're mine. Do you remember that? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I always loved music. It was my favorite hobby. As soon as I picked up a saxophone when I was 10 years old, it was always one of my favorite things to do. But uh, I didn't think you could make a living doing this. And uh, I went away to college to study history. I thought I was maybe going to go to law school. But the summer between my freshman year and sophomore year of college, I came back to town and, and hooked up with some of the cats I used to jam with in high school. Mm -hmm. And they had gotten some gigs playing in a real club, you know. And I got up on stage with them and it just hit me like, this is, this is what I want to do. This is, it just the, gave me a feeling that, that I still get every time I go on stage. And it's a very powerful feeling and it. It's a, it's, it's my whole life is, is dedicated to being able to do that as much as I possibly can. Wow. Amazing. And, you know, it's, it's hard to say this, but usually about jazz or what people would might think about jazz but you could party to Boney James, Jack. Like when he's playing, it's that belly rubbing music that, <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know how many children are attributed to Boney <laughs> James. I have heard that. I have heard that. <laughs> Just amazing. Sonically addicting is what Thank I you. call. Someone uh, wrote me a fan letter one time back in the day when you used to get real letters, but she said that she and her husband were having tremendous sex behind my music and she was sorry that I was missing it. And I was like, uh, whoa, whoa, <laughs> TMI lady, TMI. Lady. <laughs> oh, not going to jump down. I'm not following you down that yellow brick road, ma'am. You can forget that. But, you know, amazing, amazing. What excites you the most about this new song, how it's been received and the album? Slow burn. I'm super proud of the whole record. I mean, and particularly the song with October London, which is the first single that came out and, and it's climbing steadily up the R&B charts, which, you know, for me being a sax player, it's a real tremendous uh, benefit. You know, I mean, it's just really wonderful to reach 
a bigger audience. And um, so I'm super grateful, but I mean, I'm just in love with the music. You know, I, I definitely felt like the record was special when I finished it. You know, I'm, I'm in there working really hard, trying to make it sound as good as I can, but there was a certain point when we were putting the finishing touches on the record and I was able to sit back and experience it more as a listener. And I thought, this is just a really special record, you know? It's, it's really good. Since you, since you brought it up, I, I'm going to ask this question. You made, so many songs you've heard so many sounds has are you still able to experience it as a consumer and just jam out without the analysis and just have fun not other people's music <laughs> <laughs> really i can't you know whenever i'm listening to music is any contemporary music i'm always studying it and mm -hmm. and there's just a the certain professionalism on my part that i find it very hard to experience music like I used to when I was a kid and like most people do, like my family does, um, like listeners do. But that's what I'm looking for when I'm making my music is when I can get my music to the point where it can make me feel something like mm -hmm. music, like like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, all right, this this is this is done. This mm -hmm. I can I can bring this out to people. So okay. it's, it's that's an it's an interesting point. I love it. I I, I have just always wanted to know people who make a million, billion D songs, you know, like, can you just get down with music, you know, or is it an analysis thing that just invades yeah. your mind? Something like that. I know a lot of, like, I have some friends that are chefs and they have, find it hard to go to a restaurant mm -hmm. without, uh, and imp enjoy it just as a regular customer. I promise you, I've been a journalist for almost 15 <laughs> years and it's hard for me to read other people's stuff um modern day writers it's it's difficult baldwin giovanni i could read that you know what uh -huh. i mean right uh, some of this new stuff no nah. anyway um <laughs> i'm sorry i'll stay i'll stay on point i know you're a busy man and I, I really appreciate your time um talk to me about the concept please of slow burn and how it documents your journey any benchmarks changes sonically use of timbre, musical timbre that you've experimented with on this project? Well, you know, I'm, I'm always tweaking my sound, quite frankly. You know, I'm always looking for more to try and be more of a, a deep sounding horn and um, and with the songwriting to, to really connect with a feeling. And I want every song to take you on its own personal journey. And then to me, to put the record together where it's all telling a story is, is a big part of it. But, um, you know, never start out with a concept. I'm really just trying to write songs, write mm. songs. And and um, and find music that's resonating with me in that period in my life, and then the songs that come out are kind of this album. You know, I call it an album still because it's a snapshot of of what's happening in my life, I guess, inside. Okay. And the music is an outward expression of that. The word slow, the term slow burn, popped into my head when I was listening to the song that I called slow burn. It's just this one of those grooves, you know. Mm -hmm. It was sexy. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like it was building, but it wasn't too fast. And, and slow burn popped into my head. And then I looked it up in the dictionary. And in the dictionary, it says a slow burn is a feeling that grows with a slow but deliberate intensity. And I thought, that sounds good. That's a good concept to sort of talk about the whole feeling of the record right. and maybe my whole career in a way, because this is my 19th record. And I feel like I'm just hitting my stride, you know, so, you know, that's kind of the story. It's, it's amazing. I, 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 you know, was served, all I want is you. And I said, okay. And I spent like a couple of hours with Boney James music on Apple. Just, I just let it run. I was like, I'm going to work to this today. And just, I felt great and uplifted, not the drudgery of being a freaking magazine editor. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, that was yeah. beautiful. So thank you, uh, oh, thank for, you. For, for elevating my day, man. I really, I really appreciate it. You called slow burn another step in your career mm. in your creative journey so uh how do you feel you know music has evolved over the years Boy, that's another big question. You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't ponder that too deeply either, just because it's, <laughs> it's everything's so different. I mean, I've been in this business for a long time, you know, and right, I've seen yeah. it change. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is, uh, you know, 
people still love music. I still love making music. I still love playing shows and making records. And and people just found a new way to, to consume it, which is cool. I mean, I find that this whole streaming era to have all the music ever was at your fingertips has kind of turned out to be a cool thing. And people are are using it, you know. Mm -hmm. People are going back and finding my old records that, you know, it's very interesting to look at the streaming numbers, which the label sends me from time to time and to say, mm. oh, well, this this record from 20 years ago is getting a lot of streams and this new one is getting a lot of streams. And it's like, well, I guess people are just digging, listening to the music. And and I know I appreciate being able to go online and, and listen to something if I'm interested. Yeah. Um, the same said, this record has a couple of covers on it from from back in the day. You know, I'm, I did a Herbie Hancock song on this record called Butterfly. I, I got Marcus Marcus Miller playing bass on, and Corey Henry on keyboards on it. And and I sort of doing an homage to Stanley Turrentine, who was one of my favorite sax players when I was coming up. So I did a version of of, of uh, Sugar, one of his famous songs. So I'm trying to connect all the future and the past together. You, you're just having fun on this one. Just having fun. <laughs> Kid having fun. They let me do the it is. story, right? But okay. it is. You know, I. Okay. These were the serious questions. Guess what? Bye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I this is, I don't care anymore. I just want to enjoy in listening to you talk about oh, you, you. your your how you feel. Do you get a? I guess I get a physical something when I know I put a piece of prose together and it's working. Is it the same way for you? Do you get that moment during the process? You go, yeah. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's very, it's very gratifying. You know, mm -hmm. it's all a big puzzle, you know, and, and when you, especially when you start and you're sitting and you don't know what you're doing, there's an empty space. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I get little ideas and then I pick at them and pick at them and, and add something and take something away. And you know how it is. And, yeah. And you get to a certain point where it's like you've actually created something and that's, that's really gratifying. That's what I love about making records. It's like putting a puzzle together. But on the flip side, I get to go out now and, and play live shows. And that's just in the moment. Oh you do God. it once and it's gone. And and uh, and it's a rush. So there are two different kinds of feelings, but they're both around the same thing. You have, I'm looking, this tour started July 21st and is running through January 25th. If this man has a chance to sleep, blink, or breathe in peace, I doubt it. Because obviously you're rehearsing in between all this stuff. Talk to me. A, I've never been on the road as an artist, so it's a lay person's question. But talk to me about some of the creative sparks, like wildest creative sparks that you found on the road while touring for a record to that ignited a new one. Well, I mean, it's hard to pick because, I mean, every night is different. That's the thing about being on the road. You know, every crowd is different, even though we're playing the same music and there's the band communication is different and all these little things happen. And that's the great thing about it. But the other great thing about it is that when it happens, it's live. It's not commemorated in any way. Yeah. So yeah. it's gone in the moment. Mm. So I don't know, in terms of lessons or things like that, you know, every day is an opportunity to try and connect better with the audience and the band and the music and, mm -hmm. and the thrill of that in real time, the challenge of it, you know, it never gets old. That's for sure. So you're present every moment of the performance. Yeah. And that you're with the audience and they're partying with you and they're going, yeah, my man. Yeah. Well, you'd be, you know, people who have seen me live and, you know, I think they would be able to see that, uh, there's the, nothing I'd rather be doing because it does, the, the rest of the world just, just goes away and, and and hopefully I can get the crowd to come along with me and we're all in this moment of live music and it's it's a special feeling. You're, you're, you're a brother with soul and it shows, it comes out, you know, I four-time Grammy nominated, but he won a Soul Train Award, okay? <laughs> okay. And that was got, a good night. That was a good that, night. That was a real good night. It. I'm just saying that to to and and mentioning that to say, you know, I grew up in a household where it was difficult. You, if I turn this thing off, you'll see all the the records that I inherited from my mother, the vinyl, 
and you know, I've got Boney James album sitting in the crate and I've got a turntable upstairs that I need to bring downstairs and, and into this space so that I could, I could function, but I, I just love it. And then you resonate in a, in an area R&B, you know, not just the jazz, but the R&B, the love making music, the soul music, the stuff that makes people reach out and go and connect with other human beings, kind of like a bridge, a musical bridge, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. as I see it. You know what I mean? Um, you start the conversation, bro, did you hear that riff? bro? Mm -hmm. And besides, I, I was the jealous ass who was stuck on clarinet in sixth grade and wanted to be the sax guy. Because they were the cool guys, right? It's never too late. Never too late, man. Oh, brother, I'm done. Fender, <laughs> Fender tried to help me out. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> what do you most love about music? You know, music is one of the... It's magic in my mind. I'll, I'll say that. I think music is magic. Mm -hmm. um, it can just transport us. And and uh, I think it can, it connects us mm -hmm. in a way like like not many other things can. I wish people would just stop shooting, listen to some freaking music, and mm -hmm. chill out. Yes. You know, let's just... We're like, here. <laughs> you know, I don't uh, mean to get political, but I, 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 I want an advance of the album. I know it's coming out, and I'm going to sit here, and it'll be like, you know, that one o'clock in the morning kind of vibe <laughs> when everybody's asleep. I'm going to throw on best audio file headphones that I have. That's <clears throat> what I most love about your music are right. the nuances, the changes in timbre. It's an adventure. You know, I hope so. that that's my point. It, it leaves you, you know, safely deposited at the end, which unlike some other records doesn't. But this, my, my therapist, y'all, mental health is real. My therapist says, you know, do you, are you into, and I go, man, anytime jazz, you know, I could listen to Boney. I could listen to Winton. I could listen to, you know, my favorite jazz album before I, I am going to hear uh, Slow Burn, which will be my new favorite jazz album was Our Man in Paris. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how deep um, I use it to relax and go to sleep and all that good stuff. All right. The they were going to send me talking points. I know that you're doing this. Everybody, you've been interviewed by everybody, their cat, uncle, and dog. Is there a question that we, as journalists, have failed to tap into with Boney James, hmm. real Boney James, that maybe you have wanted to share, and we've just been too selfish and self-centered? to ask no no man I, I i like all the questions that you've asked and and you've made me think a little bit too so nah, it's not my job you know i i never think about things like that that's yeah i that's just want to turn them from interviews to conversations because yeah i hear you man um more fun no i'm that. just i'm i'm just glad to have an opportunity to you know to to talk to anybody about my music that's really <laughs> 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 you know that when, when, as long as we're here and 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 talking it's a good thing i you know it's a beautiful thing i agree with you excuse me, excuse me. 1990 can we take can we go back is it am i yeah, allowed sure. to do that sure 1995 seduction mm. I know where my mind was at. How did you not get distracted when you were making that project? Yeah, I think there might have been a moment where I actually did. I was playing something for my spouse, and 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 we might have got a little distracted. Okay, <laughs> I won't say it's never happened. Right, right. I mean, like. Somebody just look at you like you know you got a problem. Yeah, there's some problem. good there's some good records. That's a, I think lights down low on that album is probably one of my favorite songs that I've written. Okay. Okay. But you know when I think about it, I think about the day I went over to my friend Daryl's house and he played me these chords and and that melody popped into my head and then I grabbed my horn and set up the mic and we played and that that's what ended up on the record. You know, wow. I I think about all the you know the the technical doing of it. 
Mm-hmm. But then the music, as you say, it's a feeling that lives forever and other people get to experience. So that's that's the mysterious thing about it. I have to do this for the youngsters, right? As you were coming up and finding yourself more and more successful and more and more accepted and in, in demand, I think everybody that elevates and climbs that Jacob's ladder, right? hits a point where they have this imposter syndrome. How did you work through it? Like, did you do the butt naked in front of the mirror thing? Psychologically, not literally, but you know, and each achievement, like put on an article of mental clothing, sock, sock, draws, you know, pants, shirt, until you got to the crown and said, you know what? I'm doing the right thing. Oh, boy, that's I think that's a process for everybody. I mean, I'm a human being, you know, definitely when I first started, I had this sense of like, um, you know, do I deserve it or whatever. Um, But over time, I've gotten more mature and I've gotten more secure and confident. And and, um, the the longevity of my career has been really helpful and, and just coming to realize that there's people that obviously dig what I'm doing. So it must be worth something to them and 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 to just own that for myself. Um, yeah. That's been a process, but I, I'm I'm feeling pretty strong right now. You know, I, I feel like I I'm I'm centered in inside and know that uh I'm doing something worthwhile. And I know for sure when I go out and I see all those smiling faces that I'm doing something that's 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 having a benefit for other people. And that's really what I think it's all about. Okay. So it's a gift you're giving from what you can and your yeah. your talent is the musical. All right. Is there anything you want to cover that I may have neglected? Because I, I don't think so, man. Having no. a freaking fanboy moment and whatever. I'm supposed to remain neutral, but fuck it. It's, it's all good, show. man. I'm, I'm glad to talk to you, man. It's all fun. It's, it's my show. I'm going to have fun with it. There you go. <laughs> dozen, nearly a dozen number one on Billboard. You obviously, I'm as I'm understanding what you're saying to me, you're not paying attention necessarily to the accolades and, and things. You're just enjoying the process of making the music, the extra, you know, the icing on the cake, so to speak, is that others love what you have made for yourself. Right. I think that has been one of the key components that I've learned from uh, artists and creators with longevity. It's like created for myself. I'm tapping in with me. And if other people resonate with it, that's amazing. Um, do you have, by chance, a highlight moment of a fan or supporter? I don't know how you address them. That they faced up with you and said, you know what? This song really brought me through this or this album. Helped oh, me. man, I I, have, I hear that so often. Honestly, I can't even pick. But very, very often, especially now in this day and age with social media, and people can just write you directly at the drop of a hat. But I mean, I hear from people all the time about they're going through incredible stuff and how my music has helped them. And um, the feeling that, that gives me of, of gratitude that they shared that with me and, and that, that I was able to be helpful in some way just by playing my saxophone or writing these songs and making these records, you know, it's, it's a powerful thing. So uh-huh. super grateful to hear that every time, but yeah, that's, it's not an uncommon occurrence to, and, and uh, let you know you're doing the right thing. Okay. All right. The new single, All I Want Is You featuring October London is amazing. That's the first single to hit in July. Um, it's out on all the DSPs now, but Fair warning, if you are new to Boney James, if that hooks you, you're not going to be prepared for what he's going to do to you um, sonically. You're just not ready for the journey. So I just want you to just put your slippers on, get your favorite libation with your craft ice, do your thug <laughs> sit down <laughs> and get ready for a huge freaking eyes closed head rocking that's what i've experienced to the to, to his music and so I, i'm just predicting you know i'm not you know a prophet he's already proved it you know that this is the way it, it, it's going to affect you man i i thank you i i would love to talk to you for hours and hours and hours but i respect your time Maybe 
we can reconvene after the album drops and you've caught your breath in somewhere in a break in this Dude. Ah, this is like or maybe I'll see you in Kansas City man I, I'm going to go buy tickets immediately <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go buy tickets immediately and, and I I need brownie points here I've been married for 20 years I've got to do something different you know I did good with another concert, a Boney James concert. My hey, you know, I'm you know. Anyway, uh, thank you so much. My pleasure, man. Thanks for what having you, me. What you do for the fabric of music. Thank you for being here, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you again and shouting at you. Yo, it's Jerry <laughs> at Uptown Theater here in wow. Kansas City, November. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Peace. As an artist, we should reflect the time. Why you so talented? Cause I'm black. Why you so amazing? Cause I'm black. It's really important that we build characters so that people understand their story matters. Two Chains and I both are just really into good food. And when you know you are royalty, you will only aim in life to be royalty. We're doing it right now. I don't give a damn what they say about me. Yes, I called your ass out. I know I shouldn't be saying this kind of Shout out to Hype Magazine Network. Shout out to the Hype Magazine Network.